Rachel from All About the House. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the text tool or the font tool in Photoshop. So I've just created a new document just to show you how to use this tool. Um, you can just create a new file in Photoshop or use a file that you already have open. Then you want to go to the type tool in your uh, menu on the left here. If you right click, you can see this flyout menu will appear. When Photoshop has this little triangle down in the bottom right, that means there's a secondary menu. And if you right click, it will open up a second menu with more options. My computer's just being a little slow. There we go. So we've got the horizontal type tool, or you can type vertically. Um, I never use these tools. So with the horizontal tool, just make sure that one's selected. If it's selected, it'll have this little box next to it. And left click. So now that will be showing up the front here. Now if you left click on your template, you can start typing your text. At the moment we'll notice that it's a little small, so if you want to increase text in Photoshop, um, so say you've written a phrase or you've got a whole bunch of words on like different rows, etc. It can take a long time to highlight them manually when you left click and drag. A quicker way to do it is to press Ctrl A on your keyboard and that'll highlight everything within that uh, text layer um, in your Photoshop menu. So if you come up the top here you can increase the text, obviously the larger the size that you type the larger the text size will be. The other way that you can change text, um, this is the main text menu in Photoshop, but if you want to have the shortcut, you can click the little A symbol over here. If you don't have that showing in your menu, just go to Window and make sure that Characters ticked, and that'll bring up this menu here. So basically, they've got two menus that do essentially the same thing. The only thing different in this menu to the options that are up the top here is this one um, and this one. So this is the spacing if you've got multiple lines of text. So if you want to put text on a new line, just press enter. But when you align this, if you wanted this to be centered, you can press Control A to highlight and then center it using this little function up the top here. Um, you'll notice that it's actually not centered. We've got less of a gap between the T's on this side than we do between the Y and the E. So if you're going to do multiple lines of text, make sure there's no space between the words that you want. So if I want these on the next line, then I have no space between these two words and then press enter. And now we can see that we have the same amount of spacing on the left as we do on the right. I might just bump this up so we can see it a little better on your screen. Go side 70. Cool. All right, so that's looking better. Now if we want to move our text around on our template, you can click the move icon, left click on your text and move it anywhere you like. That's the same if you're using a shape or a graphic or an image. Um, etc. Just use click the move tool and then just left click on it and drag. So if we want to change the color of our text we can click this button here or if you go to the text menu you can see that you can change the text up here as well. So this text um, color is currently what we have in our foreground. So our foreground color is this one down the bottom here. So if you want to change your text you can click on this button or this button. It really doesn't matter which they'll both do the same thing. So if we left click we can bring up the color picker. So if you're creating a printable or um, doing a logo or other branding, a business card, etc., and you want to use your brand's colors and you know what the RGB code is, you can type it in here. Similarly, um, the six-digit hex code if you want to get an exact color match. If you just wanted to play around with the colors, you can use the color picker tool. I do have another tutorial about how to use all the color tools in Photoshop. Um, I'll include a link below this video. But basically you can just click anywhere on this um, rainbow spectrum and then play around with the color. The great thing about Photoshop is that it will give you a live update so it will show you exactly what that color is going to look like on your template or on your um, file or whatever you're creating. So what I like to do is just muck around with the colors. If I see one that I like then I hit OK. If you wanted to compare multiple colors you can create a duplicate of your text layer. So if you press Ctrl J or create a copy come over to the move tool, left click and drag. So let's say I wanted to compare two different shades of green. I've now got my copy layer created. I click on that button again and now I can pick a different shade. So do I want dark green or do I want light green? And you can see if you have a whole design and you've got all the other colors um, in your design as well, this is a really good way to compare which one you prefer. And then once I'm happy with the color that I've chosen, I just delete that copy layer or whichever layer is the color that I don't want to use. Alright, so back to the um, characters menu here. This is the spacing between your lines. So I've got two lines of text here and at the moment it's set to auto so that means it's automatically going to space just in Photoshop's default. 
but if I wanted more of a space between my words, I can left click and drag. So all of this is highlighted in blue and then enter in the spacing that I want and press enter. So 50 is a bit small. If I bump it up to 100, that's probably a bit too wide. Let's say we wanted 80. So you can type in any um, spacing size that you want and they also give you some pre um, size common spacing as well. This one here is the amount of spacing between your letters. So two means they're close together. So if you type something in, say word, or you would typically see characters not spaced very very far apart. But if you did want a lot of spacing, so you had you wanted, for example, the text to fill from the left to the right without it looking stretched, you just wanted the characters to have a large space between each letter, then you can use this um, little menu here and type in the spacing that you want. So if I make this, for example, 300, we can see that it's really spaced far apart. So that's what that tool is for. Typically, I just leave this at 2. Um, you can leave it at 0 if you want. It's pretty much much of a muchness. I don't tend to do really gappy letters unless I want something to fill from the left to the right. I don't use this um, tool here. That's just your font size again. This is your font type. So we can change it to whatever font we have installed on our computer. I do have another tutorial where I show how to install um, and how to download and install fonts on your computer. I'll include a link below this video as well if you want to go check that one out. Um, so you can change the font style and again if you wanted to compare different font styles I create a copy of that layer or a duplicate by pressing Control J and then I can compare all my different text options as well if I'm making something in Word um, you can also do that in Word just create copies of all your different um, phrase so if you want to use a phrase that has all of the letters of the alphabet um, one is the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog and that uses every letter of the alphabet so you can compare the different font styles that way um, so you can do that in Word or you can do it in Photoshop just create a copy and then change the font style I don't change any of these ones. Um, down here we've got bold. I typically always use bold for um, my font. Depending on the font style, some of them are really thin and hard to see, so you do really need to put the bold on. Others are already bold enough. So one font that I'm thinking of is called uh, Budmo Jigala, or this one here. So this one doesn't look that great in bold. I actually prefer to have it without the bold. I'm just going to create a white background so we can see this better. And the color code for white is 255 for each of the RGB codes in case you are wondering. Alright, so now we can see our text a bit better. So I typically just leave um, fonts like this how they are. You can make it bold if you want. Um, oops, I'm not on my text layer. But I find it looks a bit busy and now my circles are all touching one another. And So some font styles don't look good in bold, but typically I will do bold. Um, you can also do italics for your text, so that's good if you're doing multiple lines. You might have a line that's just um, normal and then you might have another one that's italics. That's really good for doing um, like quote, quote wall art, those sort of things. You can do uppercase text if you want, so if I type this in lowercase... Oh, didn't work. That font must be that one's a default in uppercase. So if we choose one that's not, and then oh, it didn't change my font. Let's go that one. All right. So if I type in lowercase, Control A, press that button. Now we can see that it's dropped back to lowercase. So if you want all of your text to be in uppercase, you would just press Control A to highlight all of your text and press that button there and it will make it all uppercase for you so you don't have to retype it out. So it's really good if you've got a lot of text that you want to um, update. But if you do type in caps lock or in uppercase and then you click that button, it won't go back to being in lowercase. So I type these ones in um, uppercase or caps lock. So when I took it off that, it stayed like that. So typically I tend to just type it all in lowercase and then I can change it to uppercase if I want to. If you need something with a um, subscript, so like numbers, that's how you would do that here. So if you're doing like a periodic table of elements or math or something like that, you can do your superscript and your subscript. You can also do underlines if you want and line throughs. And then you can also do um, uppercase and lowercase as well. So for example, uppercase, lowercase, just depends what you want to do, what you're creating. 
You can change the language in Photoshop. I speak English, so I just leave it at English. I never use um, anything in this menu here. So basically, all I use in the text tool or the font or the character, whatever you want to call it in Photoshop, is the spacing between lines, the spacing between letters, font size, font style, font color, and that's pretty much it. So it's super easy to use the text tool in Photoshop. And remember, if you want to align, you just hit this button here. So if you press Control A, you can align everything to the right or everything to the left or to the center. You can change the color just like we did in this menu here. And same with the text and the font um, style. If you wanted to type vertical text, you would just change it. Uh, let's create a new layer. And we can change it to vertical. So remember, click on your type um, text tool or text menu and right click and choose vertical type tool and then left click and you can start typing so now it's typing vertically um, so that's another useful tool as well so that's pretty much it um, oh one other thing if you want to make your um, font pretty so if you just got like a color what you can do is actually add a digital paper or a pattern and put like a pattern on your text so this one's really good for monograms. So if I just do the letter A and let's increase it really big so we can see what we're doing. And you want to choose a nice bold font if you're going to do this. So let's go with, for example, uh, Times New Roman is actually a good one for monograms. I know it's a bit of a boring font um, normally, but it is good for monograms. I'm just going to delete that layer because it's in my way. I don't want it. And take it off italics. Okay, cool. So now we've got our letter. What we can do is navigate to where we have a digital paper saved on our computer. Um, so this one's one from my shop on Etsy called Paper Cravings, or you can download digital papers. There's so many of them on Etsy, Google, etc. So you just left click on the JPEG or the pattern and then drag and drop it into Photoshop. And then you want to position it above your text layer. If you right click Create Clipping Mask, now we can see that we've now got a really pretty rainbow letter. If you want to change the placement of your pattern, you can press the arrow keys on your keyboard. So if I wanted more pink and less green um, up the top and the bottom, you can also press Control T with that layer selected and then make sure you choose one of the corners so it doesn't get distorted and hold down Shift. And then if you drag inwards, you can increase um, how much you see of the pattern. If you drag one of these ones, it doesn't matter so much for a stripe pattern, but if you have like a polka dot or a chevron or a quatrefoil or any other type of pattern it will stretch it so make sure you always choose a corner and hold down shift and that will keep everything nicely in proportion if you don't hold down shift see how it gets a bit off um, centered because you're probably not going to be able to hold the mouse perfectly straight so remember to hold down shift the other thing that you can do is use a pattern overlay so that's basically a digital paper without any background so I do have some of these in um, my shop paper cravings so you just left click on the overlay which will be in a um, PNG file format so the difference between a PNG and a JPEG is essentially that these areas here are transparent so we can put any color behind it that we like whereas with the digital paper the color is the background color is pre-selected for you so um, overlays allow complete design control you can do whatever color that you want so you just left click and drag to drop that one into Photoshop and then press enter and we can see that we now have a polka dot um, letter. If you want to clip it to your layer, just drag it down, left click and drag and it's already clipped because I had this one up the top here. But if it wasn't, you would just position it above your text layer, right click, create clipping mask. I do have another video on clipping masks as well, for example, using clipping masks with shapes, etc. And I'll include a link for that video as well below this one. So that's basically how I use the text tool in Photoshop. I hope you found this tutorial helpful.